and welcome to the video. In this video, I wanted to make something a little bit different. If you've seen any of the other videos on my channel, you know that I absolutely love Halo, and this is going to be a little bit of a different video. It's actually be covering the evolution of the grunts from all the Halo games, and I'm going to show you how they've gone from looking like this to looking like this. I'm also going to cover everything that the Grunts brought to the table as far as gameplay between all the Halo games because their role in the Covenant has changed pretty much with every Halo game. So let's start with the game that started it all, Halo Combat Evolved. The first time we ever saw the Grunts was in Halo Combat Evolved, of course, and in this game specifically, they had some unique behaviors. For example, the Grunts would crawl on all fours from time to time, and they also had some different variants of methane tanks on their backs. Some of them were pointed and some of them were curved. And here's a good example of what one of the curved methane tanks look like. And just like you see on screen, occasionally you'll run across a group of grunts that are sleeping. Right here is a good example of the pointed methane tanks. And it, it kind of defined the game's stealth systems, and it was really cool to see what the grunts were doing when they weren't in combat. But as soon as you started shooting, you know, a firefight would ensue. As far as weaponry, the grunts used shade turrets, plasma pistols, and needlers. Occasionally you would come across a grunt that shoots a fuel rod cannon that would explode upon death. We as the players could not use them unless we were playing the PC version of the game, and on screen now you can see the graphical difference between Halo Combat Evolved and Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary. The AI runs identical to Combat Evolved because it's the same game, but as far as cosmetics, the grunts look pretty much identical to their Halo Reach counterparts. Moving on to the next game, Halo 2. The Grunts of Halo 2 are very similar to the Grunts of Halo CE. They still fill that same combat role as the cannon fodder of the Covenant, and their arsenal remains pretty much the same. Plasma pistols, needlers, and plasma grenades. They can also speak English for the first time in the Halo games, along with the majority of the Covenant. And as far as graphics and physics, this these Grunts do have the benefit of being in a sequel, that being Halo 2, so they do have a nice ragdoll effect, and they're still the same cowards they always were in CE. When their leaders are killed, they run frantically. The Grunts of Halo 2 also got a boost in their AI. From time to time, you'll actually see them interacting with things in the world around them, which is something that they could not do in Halo CE. As you can see, this Grunt right here is climbing on top of this crate, which is, you know, an ability that the Grunts did not have in CE. They also took up the role as being able to carry and man their own plasma turrets, which was new to Halo 2. And this right here is just a graphical comparison between the Grunts of Halo 2 and Halo 2 Anniversary. Halo 2 Anniversary, unlike Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary, doesn't copy another game, and they look completely unique to this game alone. There were also a couple missions in Halo 2 where you played as the Arbiter and fought Heretic Grunts, which looked completely different. Halo 3 Halo 3 was the game that added the most benefits to the Grunts as far as AI and Arsenal. The way they engaged the player and just the way they interacted in the Halo sandbox was forever changed when Halo 3 came out. They had so many new abilities and old abilities returning. Old abilities like the ability to use the Fuel Rod Cannon. Grunts would also take up the role as fire support on a plasma turret on a phantom. Grunts also had the ability to synchronize their grenade throws for maximum damage on their enemies. And speaking of plasma grenades, Halo 3 was the game where the Grunts unleashed their new ability, the Suicide Charge. Halo 3 also allowed the Grunts to pilot their own ghosts. The prequel, Halo Reach. The grunts of Halo Reach still fill the combat role as cannon fodder within the Covenant, as they did in the original Halo trilogy. They did in Halo Reach see a huge cosmetic upgrade, as did everything in Halo Reach. The whole cosmetic look of pretty much everything changed in Halo Reach, from the from the way the Covenant looked to the weapons, the UNSC's weapons, and the Marines. Everything changed with Halo Reach. You know, it was pretty divisive, but I think they look really good. This is actually a cosmetic difference that I like compared to where they are now, like with Halo 4 and Halo 5. They also saw plenty of new abilities in Halo Reach, like the ability to pilot the turrets and wraith tanks. Reach also saw some grunt variants, like some that would wear a helmet to protect them from headshots, but the sniper rifle can still break through. Halo 3 abilities like the Plasma Grenade Suicide Charge return, except in Halo Reach they seem to do it in a bit higher numbers. Grunts still sleep in Halo Reach, but with the addition of extended assassinations, you can now sneak up and stab him in the face. Halo 4 Halo 4, just like Halo Reach, saw a huge cosmetic difference in the Grunts and the rest of the Covenant. 
I personally am not a huge fan of the way the grunts look. They have these like nostril tubes and like the methane tanks are just completely different looking. They look more reptilian. I don't know. It's just something about it. I'm not a huge fan of the role in the covenant is still pretty much identical to the way it was in Halo 1, 2, 3 and Reach. They do see some new variants like the space grunt, which can be out in space. He wears a cool little helmet and you can see his full face like normally you can't do with uh, grunts in the other Hail games. Their faces are usually covered. They have a lot more helmeted different grunt variants, but just like in Halo 1, 2, 3, Reach, when their leaders are killed, they run in panic. The Plasma Grenade Suicide Charge also makes its return. But other than that, all the changes they made were cosmetic, and I wasn't a huge fan of that cosmetic change. They did go back to speaking their alien language in Halo Reach, and this returns here. But other than that, it was all cosmetic. Halo 5. The grunts of Halo 5 still have that cosmetic look as they did in Halo 4. They pretty much act the same way. They do have these little jump jets they can use to get on top of things. I don't know if it was really a conscious decision to do that as like because it was look cool or if it was just, you know, they didn't want to have to animate them climbing. Things like the plasma grenade suicide charge also make their return. But just like Halo 4, the differences here are all cosmetic. They look and act just like they do in Halo 4. And it seemed like after Halo 4 came out, 343 just doesn't know how to innovate with the grunts and make them different. They don't give them any new abilities, and that's kind of a shame. But yeah, that's pretty much the entire evolution of the grunts from when they debuted in 2001 to Halo 5, which came out holiday 2015. I know this is kind of a different video than the videos I normally make, but I really enjoyed making it, and I hope you guys enjoy watching it. If you do like this video and would like me to make more videos like this, you know, let me know in the comments, like, you know, what other topics or species in the Covenant you want me to cover. I might even do other games like Gears of War, like do the Locust. That would be a lot of fun. Like I said, they're pretty different videos. If you guys like it, then I'll keep making more. Just let me know what you guys want to see down in the comments. But that's all I pretty much have for today, and if you like this video, be sure to like it. I do make new weird videos every week, so be sure to subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya.